Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Azure Pipelines, which is a CI system that supports GitHub and probably some other stuff. I use it on GitHub. Uh, and why I don't use GitHub Actions all that often and why I tend to use Azure Pipelines when they would work equivalently. Uh, but I'm going to walk through the features that I use that I really like, show you some that are similar in GitHub and why they're not quite there and why I continue to use Azure Pipelines. I'll also talk about the stuff that isn't great as well. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so Azure Pipelines is a CI system, very similar to GitHub Actions. Uh, you can use it to generate a bunch of jobs using uh, matrices similar to GitHub Actions. Uh, I actually migrated to Azure Pipelines, oh man, a really long time ago from, um, actually you can probably see when it was, from uh, Travis. Yes, it looks like beginning of 2019 is when I switched over from Travis CI to Azure Pipelines and set all of that up. Now, my primary reason for using Azure Pipelines is it has this really, really nice feature, which is job templating. Uh, that is, I can use a job template, send it a few small parameters, and it will expand out into a bunch of different jobs um, that you saw there. So for instance, in my PyUpgrade case, I have this little bit of YAML here. It, it includes a repository up here that is versioned. And I basically say, I want to run Python 3.7 on Windows, and I want to run 3.7.3.8.3.9 on Linux. And it uh, generates out all of this code for me. And the way it does that is via included templates. So for instance, here is the job template for talks. Uh, I can specify a bunch of parameters here. And now some of you might be thinking, oh yeah, you can do the same in GitHub Actions. We'll get to why you can't do that in a second. Um, you can get close, but not quite all of the features that I need there. Uh, but yeah, you can specify a bunch of templates. You can loop over those inputs to generate all of the various jobs that you would want to do. In this case, I'm taking the talks uh, environment name and based on that environment name, I'm picking which Python version I need to install. I don't have any Python 2. I can probably get rid of this. Um, yeah, and so you know we can we can figure out whether we need to install a pre uh, a pre-release version, et cetera, et cetera. We can also select the operating system based on the parameter, you know, and do some other stuff. Now there are a few things that GitHub Actions uh, does not support, but it has a similar uh, feature to this. Uh, there are two features that are very similar to this. One is composite workflows or, or composite actions. And those are a GitHub action, a step inside of your job that allows you to use a bunch of different steps. Uh, so for instance, yeah, here is a composite step which runs these four steps. Uh, so you would, you would include one action that expands out to these four things. Now, this is only steps within a job, so it doesn't allow you to generate new jobs as part of this. Uh, it only allows you to basically reuse a chunk of your um, a chunk of your file. And yeah, I could take my template here and you know each of these is essentially a chunk and I could include three things and do my matrix by hand, but it's not quite as, as uh, nice as the previous thing there. Uh, the other thing you can use is reusable workflows. Workflows, GitHub Actions, which are so close to what I want. <laughs> So close to what I want, but they're missing just a few small little things. Uh, where is the actual code for this? Yeah, so what you do is you set up a workflow call workflow, which doesn't get triggered by default. Uh, now, they can't be shared outside of the repositories. So that's already one, one problem here. Um, but you can access them by uh, calling them is in a steps here. And these can generate other things and uh, Oh wait, no, this is the this is not the user. Here we go. Here's the user. Oh, you can use them outside of repositories. Okay, that's new. But even still. Uh you make a job that just uses the other workflow and you know you can pass along parameters and stuff like that. So this is so close to the Azure pipeline setup. However, it has a few limitations. The first is you can't uh add steps by them. So you'll see here that in my Azure Pipelines workflow, I'm adding uh, some configurable steps before the test. And now PyUpgrade doesn't use this feature, but if we look at, uh, for instance, pre-commit, uh, pre-commit does use this feature to do things like 
install R or install Dart or set up Perl or set up Conda or do other things that not all of my jobs need to do, um, but very specific ones for pre-commit need to do that. Uh, so that's one thing that's not supported by these. You can't expand it to new steps. It would be probably not too terribly difficult to implement this uh, in JavaScript. Like you could probably make a GitHub action that interprets GitHub actions and runs them separately, but um, getting them to be exactly the same as the execution engine would be pretty difficult. Uh, the other thing that it doesn't really support is having any parameters that aren't strings. So in uh, Azure Pipelines, you can have lists, you can have Booleans, you can have maps, you can have names. Uh, you can have all sorts of different things. And in GitHub Actions, everything is a string. So you can't do interesting things like, uh, you know, add a bunch of environment variables. This is this is also a special syntax that's only supported by Azure Pipelines. Um, but you 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 know you can't even have a <laughs> you can't even have a map or a or a list as your input uh, input. Now you can kind of cheat around this. Uh, GitHub Actions has special substitution parameters that allow you to read from and dump to JSON. So you could you could input as a JSON string, but you know, inputting as a JSON string is not quite as elegant as just passing a list directly. Um, but yeah, those are, the, those are the two features that come very close to me ditching Azure Pipelines. And the reason that I would ditch Azure Pipelines is it takes so many clicks and manual setup to get it going. Uh, every time I add a repository, I have to click through a like, eight or nine step flow and check a particular box and put a special file in a particular place and make sure that the configuration knows about that special little file. Uh, and it's kind of clunky. I've, I also have to log into a separate system and set all that up. It's a bunch of work. Whereas with GitHub Actions, you just drop a file in GitHub Workflows and it's already on by default. You don't have to do anything special to make it work. Uh, so that's kind of the kind of the thing that I grumble about Azure Pipelines and wish, wish it were a little bit better. Um, the other little minor thing that Azure Pipelines has that GitHub Actions does not is there is a coverage utility that is provided out of the box, which is pretty convenient because it means, oops, that was from the last video. It's pretty convenient because it means that I don't need to involve CodeCov or any sort of other coverage system here. I can click into, oh, I don't remember where it is. <laughs> where is it? I, cl I don't click on it very often because, uh, oh, here we go. Coverage. Oh, I, what? Where did it go? <laughs> anyway, there's there's a coverage link somewhere in here. I don't remember where it is because I get to 100 and then I don't care about it. Um, but sometimes partial coverage can be useful and a system to visualize it can be pretty helpful. There's an HTML page somewhere in, in uh, the output here that I just don't remember where it is. Maybe if I go to here. I don't know. Anyway, oh, and anal analytics, oh, somewhere in there. You can you can see it's not a very important feature to me because I don't know where it is. Uh, but anyway, I'm hoping that eventually GitHub Actions will have just enough features that I can ditch my Azure pipelines. But until now, it's nice to be able to version all of my workflows, upgrade them as I need them, and you know have a have a pretty minimal template. Uh, and anytime I make a fix to one of my workflows, uh, I basically just make a fix to this template repository. Uh, you can see I've actually made a fix for 241 and I haven't bumped it here. Uh, but then I can just go in here and say, okay, well, if I want to fix, if I want to pull in that fix, I can just bump the version of my CI system and be on to the latest one. Upgrade Azure Pipelines and then it'll pull in whatever, whatever new template I have and, and go from there. Um, but anyway, that's why I still use Azure Pipelines, even though GitHub Actions is a little bit more convenient um, and some of the features that I use from it. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.